Dear friends, welcome back to Curious with I am Dr. Mohsina. In today's video, we will discuss about a very important topic which is equine protozoal myeloencephalitis which is a protozoan disease in equine caused mainly by the protozoan parasite sarcocystic neurona or sometimes sporadic cases are caused by other protozoan parasite called Neospora hugesi. So let's begin. Equine protozoal myeloencephalitis or EPM is a common neurologic disease of horses in the Americas. It has been reported in most of the contiguous 48 states of the USA, southern Canada, Mexico and several countries in Central and South America. In other countries, EPM is seen sporadically in horses that previously have spent time in the Americas. Coming to the etiology and epidemiology, most cases of EPM are caused by an apicomplex and protozoan called sarcocystis neurona. Horses are infected by ingestion of sarcocystis neurona sporosis in contaminated feed or water. The organism undergoes early asexual multiplication also known as schizogony in extraneural tissues before parasitizing the CNS. Because the infectious sarcocysts are only rarely formed, the host is considered as an aberrant or dead end host for sarcocystis neurona. Like other sarcocyst species, S. neurona has an obligate predator prey life cycle and the definitive host or the predator host for sarcocystis neurona in the USA is the opossum. So like other sarcocyst species, S. neurona has an obligate predator prey life cycle. Now let's see the life cycle of sarcocystis neurona. So, the intermediate hosts are the nine banded armadillos, striped skunks, raccoons, etc., which are carrying the sarcosis in skeletal muscle. From them, the definitive host or the predator host, get, which is the opossum, get infected. And sexual reproduction of the uh, organism, sarcosis neurona, occurs in the digestive tract or intestinal epithelium of opossum, and which shed infective sporosis in feces and uh, by eating by digesting the contaminated feed stuff which contain the sporosis uh, horses get infected which are the dead end host or the aberrant host and lesions are formed in spinal cord and brain of horses nine banded armadillos striped skunks raccoons sea otters Pacific harbor seals and domestic cats have all been implicated as intermediate hosts. However, the importance in nature of each of these species is unknown. Sporadic cases of EPM are associated with Neospora hugesi, an organism closely related to sarcosis neurona. The natural host of this organism have not yet been identified. Transplacental protozoal transmission with the birth of infected folds has been documented for Neospora hugesi but not for Sarcosystis neurona. Now let's see the clinical findings of EPM. Because the protozoa may infect any part of the CNS, almost any neurologic sign of EPM is possible. The disease usually begins insidiously but may present acutely and be severe at onset. Signs of spinal cord involvement are more common than signs of brain disease and horses with EPF involving the spinal cord have asymmetric or symmetric weakness and ataxia of one to all limbs sometimes with obvious muscle atrophy. You can see uh, the asymmetric muscle atrophy of left hind quarter of the of the horse here in this picture. When the sacrocaudal spinal cord is involved there are signs of coda equina syndrome. EPM lesions in the spinal cord also may result in demarcated areas of spontaneous sweating or loss of reflexes and cutaneous sensation. The most common signs of brain disease in horses with EPM are depression, head tilt and facial paralysis. 
any cranial nerve nucleus may be involved and there may be seizures visual deficits including abnormal manes responses or behavioral abnormalities without treatment epm may progress to cause recumbency and death and progression to recumbency occurs over hours to years or may occur steadily or in a stop start fashion now let's see the lesions with epm there is focal discoloration hemorrhage and or malacia of cns tissue you can see focal discoloration of hemorrhage of spinal cord specimen here and histologically protozoa may be found in association with a mixed inflammatory cellular response or neuronal destruction schizons in various stages of maturation or free merozoites commonly are seen in the cytoplasm of neurons or mononuclear phagocytes also parasitized are intravascular and tissue neutrophils and eosinophils and more rarely capillary endothelial cells and myelinated axons merozoites may be found extracellularly especially in the areas of necrosis in at least 75% of clinical cases protozoa are not seen on h and e stain sections So in 75% of clinical cases protozoa are not seen on h and e stained histopathology sections now let's see the histopathological sample here in the picture a the tissues contain scattered foci or lymphohistiocytic inflammation with rare small areas of necrosis and in picture b you can see intermingled with these inflammatory cells there are few protozoal schizons which are marked by arrows prompting the diagnosis of epm now let's see the diagnosis based on neurologic signs elimination of competing diagnosis and serology postmortem diagnosis of epm is confirmed by demonstration of protozoa in cns lesions on the basis of distinctive morphology or by immunohistochemical staining Testing of sarcosis cis neurona specific antibody is the basis for presumptive antimortem diagnosis of EPM. Serologic test for specific antibodies against whole sarcosis cis neurona or Neospora hugesi or protozoal surface antigens provide evidence of current or previous exposure to the organism. The slow or negative serum titers tend to exclude the diagnosis of EPM. Conversely, positive or high serum s neurona titers have limited diagnostic utility in that such titers do not clearly distinguish horses with subclinical extra neural infections from those with epm in horses with neurologic signs serum csf antibody titer ratios of less than 1 is to 100 or c ratios more than 1 are indicative of production of s neurona antibody in the cns and are highly supportive of the diagnosis of epm in a few horses with epm csf analysis reveals abnormalities such as mononuclear pleocytosis and high protein concentration depending on the clinical signs differential diagnosis may include cervical vertebral stenotic myelopathy trauma aberrant parasite migration equine degenerative myeloencephalopathy equine herpes virus 1 myeloencephalopathy equine motor neuron disease coda equina neuritis arboviral encephalomyelitis or eastern or western equine encephalomyelitis or vesnal encephalomyelitis rabies bacterial meningitis hepatoencephalopathy or leukoencephalomalacia so all these come under the diagno- differential diagnosis list of epm so all these condi- conditions should be ruled out now let's see the most important part that is the treatment of epm anti protozoal drugs and immunomodulators are the most important part of the treatment the fda approved treatments for epm are ponazuril diclazuril and a combination of sulfadiazine and pyrimethamine The bioavailabilities of panasuril and diclazuril are improved by concurrent peroral administration of corn oil or DMSO. 
A loading dose of pranasuril 15 mg per kg per oral may be given on the first day of treatment to rapidly attain therapeutic blood levels. The sulfur diazin pyrimethamine product must be given at least one hour before or after hay is fed. Anemia may develop after prolonged treatment with sulfur diazin pyrimethamine and is best prevented by providing folate rich green forage such as alfalfa hay or green pasture. Approximately 60% of horses improve with each type of treatment but less than 25% recover completely. Relapses occur commonly up to 2 years after discontinuation of therapy. Because of immunosuppression or immunodeficiency may be a risk factor of EPM, immunomodulators are sometimes given as ancillary therapy. Now let's see the prevention and control. No proven preventive is available. A conditionally approved vaccine was marketed but the license lasted in 2008 and the vaccine is no longer offered. There is interest in using antiprotozoal drugs for prevention and it has been shown that daily declisoril prevent falls from zero converting against sarcosis neurona and neospora hugesi. Evidence based protocols for preventive use of antiprotozoal drug are not yet available. The source of infective sporosis in opossum feces so it is prudent to prevent access of opossums to host feeding areas. And horse and pet feed should not be left out. Open feed bags and garbage should be kept in closed galvanized metal containers. Bird feeders should be eliminated and fallen fruit should be removed. Opossums can be trapped and relocated. Because putative intermediate hosts cannot be directly infective for horses, it is unlikely that control of these population will be useful in prevention. Before ending, now let's see the key points once again. EPM is caused by CNS infection of equids which either of, with either of an apicomplex and protozoa, sarcosis neurona or neospora hugesi. Common clinical signs are asymmetric ataxia and weakness of limbs and regional neurogenic muscle atrophy. Less common signs are seizures, facial paralysis, head tilt and other signs of cranial nerve dysfunction. Serologic support for the overdiagnosis was obtained using serum CSF titer ratios for ELISA or indirect fluorescent antibody test. EPM is treated with antiprotozoal drugs mainly pronazuril and diclazuril and immunomodulators and there is no vaccine available now for EPM. So that's all about equine protozoal myeloencephalitis. So if the video is informative and useful please like it uh, like it and uh, share with your friends comment your suggestions if you are new to this channel or not subscribed yet please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. See you soon with another video. Thank you.